is a hearing regarding code enforcement matters authorized by Section 294 of the Jackson County Code. I'm John Buki, the Code Enforcement Hearings Officer. As Hearings Officer, I will determine the admissibility and credibility of the evidence, the extent to which the allegations have been proven, and the guilt or innocence of the accused violators. As the Hearings Officer, I've been granted power uh, to impose fines, fees, and corrective measures and to order the abatement of nuisances, the forfeiture of property, and other specified actions. Jackson County bears the burden of coming forward with evidence and proving the allegations in the citations against defendants. Defendants bear the burden of establishing the defense and proving all facts that they assert for that purpose. Allegations and assertions must be proven by a preponderance of the admissible evidence the county shall present its case first, and defendant's defense will follow. All parties are encouraged to provide an opening statement and a summation, and the county is entitled to a final rebuttal. All parties are entitled to be represented by an attorney at their own expense, although parties ordinarily represent themselves. The party not represented by an attorney may request a continuance in order to secure an attorney if that party determines that such representation is necessary to the protection of his or her rights. Any evidence I consider must be relevant and material. It may be oral, written, photographic, physical, or of any other type commonly relied upon by reasonably prudent persons in the conduct of their serious affairs. Sir, have you signed in previously? You're referring to me? Yeah. This gentleman just walked in. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Where was I? Parties may reject to the introduction of evidence into testimony. The party also may concede continuance of the hearing upon adequate showing that additional time is essential to bring in evidence not available at the time of the current hearing. The party must show that the evidence will be available within a reasonable and specific time and it will have a material impact on the outcome of the matter. The hearings will be recorded to preserve evidence. Testimony, could you sign in at the uh, and rulings in the event, objections and rulings in the event of an appeal. Please do not speak unless you're at a microphone. And there's the microphone up there. This gentleman is, do you still hear me okay? Huh? I know my voice has fell, fallen down a little bit. Can you hear me okay? Mr. Burke, I'm, uh, Juki, I have a question that I'd like to ask here. Did you receive a certified mail uh, yesterday from the Thompsons? I, actually, I did not, but that doesn't mean you're here or there, so. I'm sorry, I couldn't I hear. didn't ask, no, go back to the, no, just go down there and say hey, that. Go down and say that. I already gave it. Um, the Thompson did file for an expedited <coughs> petition for injunction relative to the jurisdiction in this case. And the issue before us today... I, I said I'm not done with my statement yet. And I understand that. Okay, well, let me the finish. Thompsons are here on the basis to challenge the Jackson County about whether they have a superior title to their land patent. If they don't, then there's no, no reason for the Thompsons to proceed any further, nor is the court have jurisdiction to proceed forward anymore. So the question is, does the county have a superior title to the, <coughs> the, the Thompsons' land patent? Because if they don't, they have no jurisdiction for any of this. Okay, I'm going to finish reading my statement. It's required, and okay. so I'm going to do that. The hearings will be recorded to preserve evidence, testimony, objections, and rulings in the event of an appeal. Please do not speak unless you're at a microphone and I have recognized you. My decision is the final determination of Jackson County and will be accompanied by written findings of fact conclusions of law, and final order. My decision may be appealed to circuit court according to the provisions of Jackson County Code Section 294.21.
Decisions which involve land use ordinances or regulations are also appealable to the Oregon Land Use Board of Appeals. The appellant shall pay all costs of appeal, including the cost of the preparation of the transcript as established by the Board of Commissioners. Any issue upon which, which may be the basis for appeal must be raised no later than the close of this hearing. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you a preliminary question. And, and the dress as I usually dress with a coat and tie. Sorry, okay, Sorry about you. that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I didn't know I was going to be on TV. So uh, I'm dressed for a five-hour drive after I leave here. Let me understand what's going on here. I want to read through just basically the front part here. The service that you so just received I, precludes this hearing uh, to go forward. They filed for an injunction. Well, has it been granted? Pardon? Has an injunction been granted? Has a, has a circuit court granted the injunction? No. It was just filed day before yesterday. Well, you haven't gotten right. an answer back from them. So it hasn't been. It's, uh, so it hasn't been. Uh, so it hasn't been uh, ruled upon by the circuit court, has it? That is correct, but that precludes Thank you from going forward Thank simply you. because there hasn't been a determination made on that yet. Well, uh, uh, an injunction, well, all right. I, In all due I, respect, listen, sir, if the county doesn't have a superior title to the Thompson's land patent, then there's nothing to go forward with. I agree with that. So sit down, please. Pardon? Sit down. Okay. Does the county have a superior title? I've already ruled on that question. He said no. Okay, then there's no more to discuss. Okay. Um, we're going to indicate that the injunction has not been granted by the circuit court. If it had been, I would terminate the hearing. If it hasn't been, so I'm not going to terminate the hearing. I'm going to have the county proceed forward and ask you specifically, and I'm going to have to speak louder for this. Are you willing to accept jurisdiction of the county in this matter or not? No. No. Okay. I rule that they're in default and that they're, and will allow the county to uh, move forward with uh, their evidence. And so please identify yourself and you swear you have. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth regarding this matter. Yes, I do. Are you full? 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 Are you Can you tell me what's happened? Let me just put for the record is that I've ruled on this case before. I have the rule, my ruling before me. Um, it was issued on. Mr. Harry's officer. Oh. May I ask for about a three minute recess? I believe that uh, I have an opportunity to talk to Ms. Thompson regarding this situation. Sure. Thank you, sir. I, no, would, no. I need him. That's I need fine. I'm not worried about that. Do you, bring, do you I, want to bring as a representative? Come on, off the record. Thank you. Thank you. to make sure that Ms. Thompson had the opportunity to understand that she had the right to ask for a continuance as well. Yes. Um, my understanding is she is not going to ask for that continuance. All right. The uh, county would ask for you to proceed. Um, it would be a matter of asking for her, for her plea. Objection. They're not going to plead, and so they're... Objection on the basis of the challenge of the jurisdiction. We went through this on the 27th of June, and we're right back at the same drill. And the county has never provided jurisdiction to hear this case, especially against the land patent. I understand that. I'm not going to do anything negative to you other than to rule on the case before me. And that's it. I understand you do not accept... I already asked you, do you not accept jurisdiction of this of this body to hear this case, either on the basis, on any basis, including the fact that you filed an injunction with the circuit court. Is that correct? 
Is that correct? So yes. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to rule that, the, that, um, that we hear from the county, and I think the brief presentation is in order. Um, and uh, then we will give it to the circuit court. That's their job. And um, we'll just do our job. So your job, Mr. Zanny, is to tell me why uh, this uh, case should be decided in favor of the county. Yes, sir. Jackson County has adopted Jackson County codified ordinance chapter 1864 to regulate solid waste existing on property within the county. It has also adopted the subject to the land development ordinance and all of the sections of the ORS necessary for the implementation thereof. After reviewing Jackson County tax records and personal observations, I determined that Robert G. Thompson and Claudia N. Thompson own and occupy the property at 18922. Antioch Road, which is a white city address with a zip of 97503, the legal address of 34-2 West-34, tax lot 400 within Jackson County. On June 27, 2017, the hearing officer made a decision against the defendants, Robert Thompson and Claudia Thompson. And the defendants had to remove all solid waste from the premises within 60 days and had to re remove the use of the recreational camping vehicle from the premises within 30 days, and had to remove all intensive livestock from the premises within 30 days of the signing of the order. On September 6, 2017, I observed solid waste existing on the property that included garbage, rubbish, ashes, sewage, demolition and construction waste, abandoned vehicles or parts thereof, vehicle tires, discarded home appliances, animal solid and semi-solid waste, and other discarded solid materials. Give me the date again, please. September 6, 2017. This is a continuing violation of Section 1864.06 of the Jackson County Codified Ordinance. On August 3, 2017, I observed intensive livestock, animal husbandry in excess of land development ordinance standard for each acre, and I observed a recreational camping vehicle occupied on the premises as a dwelling for more than 30 days in a 12-month period. This is a continuing violation of section 6.3.1 of the LDO and continuing violation of 6.5.3 subsection H's and Henry of the LDO. And you have some documentary evidence in this? Yes, sir. Document B1 is a copy of the property data online which shows that Robert and Claudia Thompson are the owners of this property. Document B2 is a copy of the order, finding, findings and conclusions. It's a six-page document. Document B3 and B4 are Google Earth overviews of the property, one from the date of 7-7-2017. The other is 527 of 2016. And then the photographs B1 through B7 were taken by myself on September 6, 2017. Showing the RV in place of where it was at the same time as the last hearing. The solid waste in place. The only thing missing from the property is the swine. The, the swine. Like 30 chickens. Yeah. Based on based on the amount of animals that they've had on the property, it wasn't just an issue about the swine themselves, but the swine do take up five acres of property. Um, they do have multiple fur-bearing animals, multiple multiple fowl, um, in excess of the land development ordinance. No, you didn't do your job at all, did you? So it's your testimony that the swine has been removed. That's my understanding. Which would then put us in legal Anything limits. Anything else? No. All right. I find the parties guilty as set forth by the county, and I will rule that the uh, recommended. Uh, this is a continuing violation which carries with it a much more a much stricter a penalty, which is in the front part. And what happens in, oh, the, in the court, 
Um, they or may not be at the moment. The $30,000 fine, $27,000 is suspended, $3,000 remaining. Remove solid waste within the premises, and we take 30 days of order and remove the remaining intensive livestock from the premises within 30 days of order and remove the recreational camping vehicle from the premises within 30 days of the order. Um, Did you count those animals on September 6th when you were up there? The, um, and that will be my ruling. I, have, I do have a comment that I would like to make based upon this whole matter. I respect, I respect your right to... This is a personal statement. It's not a statement of county. It's a statement by me. And I respect your right to... He's not. To go to the courts. Can you speak into the microphone, please? Huh? Can you speak into the microphone, please? Okay, thank you. The darn thing doesn't move anywhere except up and down, so I'll do my best. Well, he was on the property, so that's trespassing. I'll start again. It's my personal statement. I believe that you have every right to challenge the jurisdiction of the county in the court and get a determination as to whether a federal land patent or whatever it's called, um, is superior to the jurisdiction of the county. Um, and if you're successful in that, well, then so be it. That's what the courts of this state will hold. That's why we have them. What I do want to say in defense of, of what I believe is the interest of the county is not whether you're subject to its jurisdiction or not. The interest of the county, and my interest, is in seeing compliance with what I consider to be reasonable rules relating to the use of property that respects surrounding properties and other people. That's why we have zoning ordinances, and that's why we have hearings on these kind of matters. You don't have to respond to that. It's my personal thought. I just all I care about what I care about is complying with the zoning ordinances that have been duly passed by the Board of Commissioners of this county and are in compliance with the state laws that have been promulgated by a duly elected legislature and governor in this state, and that my job is to enforce that. So I have no ill will toward you and the position that you take, and I think you're going to court to try to get it resolved is exactly what you should do and uh, therefore uh, that's what you are going to do and I will issue my ruling and you will receive it in due course in writing. Um, okay, it's on the property. Mm -hmm. and this part. Okay. If I'm understanding you correctly, sir, what you're saying is that the county is claiming jurisdiction over the land patent and therefore you're going to en enforce codes that you have no jurisdiction in which to do? Is that what we're talking about here? No. Is that what we're talking about here? I think I've made myself very clear. I'm just ruling on the words. Well, I want a clarity for the answer no, to that question. I'm not going, I'm not going to... I've forgotten your name. Please just... So I, can't I don't know money. if you're aware or not, and I respectfully submit this, but the United States Supreme Court has ruled over and over and over and over for 187 years of the fact that nothing can supersede the jurisdiction of that land patent. In the Summa case versus the State of California Coastal Commission in 1984, the state tried to make claim to properties that had to, that was owned by Summa. The United States Supreme Court stated that unless uh, the State of California was named on the original patent, then they had no privity, which is standing, of which to interfere with that patent, and that and challenge to this Jackson County of whether you, in fact, are named on that patent. That's why I asked for a superior title to be presented. And you're telling me that you're going to go ahead and do it anyway. I find that interesting. Well, whether you find it interesting or not, we're off the record. The hearing is closed. It's now in the hands of the 
of the judicial body of the county, and we're going to... In our pleadings, under ORS 12.040, it states that the state cannot interfere with that land patent. I am not a superior court judge. I'm a, 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 a superior court, a circuit court judge. I cannot issue rulings relative to that. All I can do is issue rulings based upon the county ordinances. But you cannot and make that effective without having jurisdiction. Can you hear me okay now? And you have not provided jurisdiction. That was my challenge to this court. And, and, uh, and that's why you're going to court, right? Pardon? Isn't that why you're going to court? I'm trying to speak loudly enough so you can hear me. I'm not angry. What? Is that why you're going to court? Yes. You yes. have not provided Ms. Thompson, on is that the why record you're going? Ms. the Thompson, jurisdiction. Ms. Thompson, you're the, you're the, you're the defendant. Isn't it? That's why you're going to court, right? Yes. That's your intent to go to court. It's their job to decide this, not me. Okay. I've already determined it. Giving you my ruling, it's in writing in the prior case, so it'll be in writing in this case, and you can take it to, to the circuit court and get their determination on it. The Supreme Court has stated that without jurisdiction, any rulings made are null and void. So that's why I'm asking the question, on what basis is jurisdiction on the record? It's on the record, and that's the end. We're not, on, we're not even on the record now. He closed it. You have witnesses to the fact that you're denying that to be put on the record on the basis that you don't want to accept the jurisdictional challenge. Thank you. Let's go. Uh, you about upholding state law. Yeah. I have one more comment. Would you clarify the issue about your upholding state law? In our pleadings that you received there this morning that was sent by certified mail, you're not adhering to state law. I haven't read them. I didn't get them. I haven't read them. I just got them this morning. I'm not going to answer your question. Well, I'm going to move on.